Hi everyone, how are you? It is Professor Jones and I am here to give you an overview of the informative speech assignment. It is that time in the semester so we might as well get on with it. So a couple of things. Let me start this by asking the question. How many people like to learn by hearing it? Raise your hand. Okay, and how many of you like to learn by seeing it? You need to be able to read about it. Okay, and how many people like to put your hands on it? Like you like to be in the middle of it. Okay, and how many of you need a combination of all of those things? Okay, so that is the basis of this speech. You are gonna teach us about something that you are interested in, and you're going to do a speech, and you're gonna have a PowerPoint, and you're also going to have an artifact to hand out or an audience participation. Okay, so let me give you an example. If you were gonna do a speech about baseball, there are a ton of topics about baseball, Dodger Stadium, the, the history of baseball, what's the infield fly rule, there's tons, okay? But let's say that you were going to teach us about uh, Dodger Stadium. It's a huge topic, right? So we'd have to narrow it down, and I have another lecture for that, so be sure you check that out. And let's say that for your audience in your room, or even if we have an audience that's completely remote, let's say that you have your baseball mitt with you. Okay, that's your hands-on. Or let's say that you were gonna teach us about the wave, where it originated, why it's so popular, the different ways to do the wave, and you're gonna have us do the wave. You're either gonna have do the wave with the people in your audience, or you're gonna have your virtual office, your virtual audience do it. So that's a more of a hands-on, you see what I mean? And you have to have that because when you're teaching people, you need to give people the information in the way that makes it come alive for them. And like some of you just said, some of you need to hear it, see, some of you need to see it, and some of you need to put your hands on it. So think about when you got together with your partners or your, or your families, depending on if you were on campus or if you were online, and you learned about each other and you've made up these fictional stories about your family and your friends who were graduating. Okay, that's a hands-on, right? We created this thing. And if you were in my on-campus class, we brought food, we had a party, right? And if you were in my online classes, then you guys got together, some of you dressed. So we created this imaginary world where those graduation speeches could come to life. And this is what you're going to do for the informative speech, okay? Now, I wanna say something really important about the difference between informative and persuasive speaking. Informative speaking over here is not persuasive. It's just the facts, Jack. All right, so that's why we have to use academic research in this assignment. Really important that you're teaching people stuff that's true. I know. Think about maybe in the last couple of years, so a few things that you've heard in the media and heard from certain people in the media that turn out not to be so true. Okay, important that you're giving people real stuff. Now, persuasive speaking is sometimes informative because sometimes you have to teach people about certain topics in order to get them to see that they need to vote a certain way or try Meatless Mondays or whatever. All right, informative, just the facts. Persuasive, sometimes informative. It's, a, it's an incredibly important distinction because when you're choosing your topic, you're just giving us the facts. So if you chose blood donation, you would just be informing us about blood donation, the shortages, why it's so important. Maybe you'd give us a little information about blood types, what it's like to go, teaching us. If you were gonna take that topic and turn it into a persuasive speech, you might give us a little bit of that same information but then you would have a call to action piece, which is persuading us to actually go donate blood. See the difference? Okay, this is really important, so I want you to remember this as we go down this road. All right, so let's take a look at the guidelines in the rubric just so that you know what's up. And then I have several other lectures about how to set it up, how to narrow your topic, how to go to the library, academic research. So be sure you take a look at those as well, all right? So here we go, we're gonna scroll all the way down to this week's module so that we can take a look at the guidelines and the rubric. Do 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 do, here we are. And click on informative guidelines and rubric. Here we go. So you are gonna become the teachers. You're gonna teach us about something. So as always, I want you to start with an attention getter. 
I want you to relate the topic to the audience. Maybe it's a topic we've never heard of or never had time to think about. Teach us. Are we traveling to Peru? Amazing. Take us there. Show us what it would be like to travel there. And especially right now, it's so important to transport your audience to a place that they can't go. Teach us about, uh, like I said, baseball. Teach us about the Electoral College. Teach us about uh, growing, no, not that, about growing flowers. Teach us about the importance of gardening. I mean, teach us about something that maybe we've never had a chance to learn about. Teach us about World War I. Teach us about uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Teach us about something exciting in history. You've got lots of choices, all right? So your body should have two to four main points. That's how you narrow it down, all right? Two to four main points. Uh, you're going to make let us know when you start and when you end. Same as always, okay? And in this speech, you're going to use three to five academic sources. It's very specific in this assignment what you can use. So be sure you go and look at those videos and look at the charts that I've given you so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. And then one artifact is required. Like I said, the baseball mitt or do the wave. Or if you're talking about the power of positive thinking, have everyone in your audience stand up and turn to the next person and say, you look amazing. There's lots and lots and lots of things that you can do that are hands-on and that would count, all right? Same thing with framing. Be sure that I can see you head on, all right? I can see you and you can see, like right now, if I was standing up, you could see me from head to toe. I should be seeing you from head to toe and your audience should, it's like I'm behind your audience. So I see the back of them and I see you at the front of the class. Imagine it that way. All right, this speech is five to seven minutes. Take a breath and let it breathe. Just let it burn, baby. It's okay, you got this. Five to seven minutes, you can totally do it. You guys are doing really great at making the time in these speeches, so don't hold back now. Just keep on going. Five to seven minutes, you're gonna submit your final draft to Canvas, and then you're gonna post your recorded speech to the peer review discussion, and that's it. I've included the rubric for you to take a look at. It's a hundred big dog points all right so make sure that you have your audience make sure that you're making the time that you've practiced there's lots of resources here in the module for you to know exactly what you're doing we have virtual office hours so be sure that you check in with that if you have any questions or use the virtual office so many ways to get this underway and also i'm going to talk a little bit in another lecture about some other options for doing the speeches and just one last thought here Pick something you like. Don't waste a second in this class picking topics that you aren't interested in. That is no fun. And with everything going on in every semester, you want to pick something that you feel like compelled to pick up the book and do some research on, that you're excited to talk to us about, okay? Now, some topics are easier than others when it comes to academic research, but that's why I'm here. I can help you with all of that. All right, so go get started. Think of your topics that you put on the discussion boards. There are a lot of interesting ones and you got some really good feedback from other people. So think about that, get started, go look at the other lectures and then we'll keep touching base, okay? All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day.